Hi, this is Ross Jeffers from Mobileburn.com, and here I have the new HTC Desire C. Uh, it's the latest Android smartphone from HTC, and it's running uh, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, and as you can see on top, we've got HTC's own Sense uh, 4.0 user interface as well, which is pretty nice looking. Um, the device itself is a pretty small device. Um, it's sort of lower down in the range, but um, you can see compared to the HC One X here, it's quite a lot smaller, and uh, the screen also is appreciably smaller. You can see the difference, turn the brightness down a bit on that. Uh, you can see the difference in size of the overall device and also in the display. Uh, the display is actually a three and a half inch display uh, with HVGA resolution. Uh, around the back here we've got a five megapixel camera, no flash though. Uh, we've got a little loudspeaker grill as well. Uh, we've got a micro USB charging and data port and then on the other side here we've got just a volume rocker. Uh, there's nothing but a microphone pinhole on the bottom uh, and then we've got a power key and a 3.5mm headphone port on the top uh, you can see on the front here we've got a back home and also like a uh, multitasking menu key there uh, all touch sensitive controls ok so we're just going to quickly have a look and see what we've got in the box here um, you can see we've got, just to take this out uh, a regular sort of wall socket plug here with a USB port in the top and that allows us to use our data charging cable uh, just literally plug this straight in the top of here as you can see and then that end goes in the phone just to allow us to charge the phone from a wall socket uh, of course this can also be used for data just plug it into a PC uh, and plug the Desire C straight in uh, we've also got a set of regular earbud headphones with the uh, HTC logo on as you can maybe just about see there um, and they've got regular 3.5mm headphone jack so you can use your own headphones you don't have to use these uh, but the benefit of using these is they've got this microphone uh, and this sort of little button here which can be used for answering and ending calls so when you're listening to music you don't miss any calls so you, you don't have to unplug the headphones to take the call you can just answer it with this button and then the microphone's built in here which you can sort of have up by sort of your mouth area it would hang when you've got the headphones in your ears uh, anyway that plugs straight into the top here in the uh, headphone port and as you can see from on the back here we've got Beats Audio uh, sound uh, sort of profile built into the handset to sort of improve the sound which is uh, quite good uh, if just flick across here you can see we've actually got a music widget here so we can sort of play and pause the music from here and turn the volume up and down that's just playing through the uh, rear speaker obviously you don't have to have the headphones plugged in um, but from this widget alone we can do things like repeat tracks um, and also shuffle tracks skip forwards and backwards and falls we can access Soundhound and we can even access the full music app just by tapping somewhere sort of at the top there and you can see we've got things like album art here um, we can let's get back here a minute you can see we've got album art for things let me just there we go you search by artist album song playlist or genre uh, and with the album art you can see if you've got it loaded it all shows up quite nice and clearly on the uh, on the display here um, the phone is quite slow, uh, I've noticed one of the things about it, it's only got a 600 megahertz processor so it's not the quickest, I mean it's not too bad flitting around the menus but uh, I mean even in things like messages um, if we just quickly type something out sometimes it can bog down and it sort of can't quite keep up uh, it's not going to do it for me now just to spite me but take my word for it, it can be quite slow, you can see the keyboard sort of jerked away then it didn't sort of flow away as nicely as you would expect with say the uh, HTC One X or uh, one of the uh, newer top end phones um, but you know it's relatively quick it does the job um, if we just load up a web page quickly as well we can just show you on a Wi-Fi connection even the Google page takes sort of a couple of seconds to load so let's see how it does with the mobile burn web page you can see there it's sort of taking a while to keep up with me as I enter uh, the web address there as well let's just see Go on the full site, give it a bit more of a challenge. You can see nothing really happens for a little while. And this is on a Wi Fi connection with a full 50 meg uh, broadband connection. But yeah, eventually it moved, you know loads up relatively quick. But it's still, you can see there's a bit of lag between what I'm doing with my thumb and actually what's happening on the screen. So it's not the quickest experience. You know, it's not quite as smooth as you would expect from a top-end device, uh, but it is, of course, a low-end, a cheaper device. So I suppose you expect maybe a little bit of lag, but it is. You know, it's quite a lot of lag for me. I think it's more than I would have hoped to have in this handset. 
Um, also, as I said, the screen's only HVGA, so it's not the best resolution for browsing the web. I mean, already we're not that far zoomed out, and this text is quite jaggy and difficult to read. Um, so, you know, the, the screen resolution's not as good as I would have liked either. I mean, the specs of this phone mostly match the uh, HTC Wildfire S, which was released over a year ago. Um, you know, the same processor speed, the same megapixel camera. Um, the same resolution of the screen, even though the screen is slightly bigger this time around. I mean, the only real upgrade you get is the slightly bigger screen. You get double the memory inside. We've got four gigabytes built into this, uh, and also you can um, upgrade it with a micro SD card, which I'll just show you now. If I just pull the rear cover off, uh, we've got a micro SD card slot here. You can see the whole internals red, which is quite neat, including the battery. Um, and it takes regular SIM cards under here as well, not micro SIM. Um, but yeah, I just find that really in a year I would have hoped that HTC would have sort of upped the specs of their low-end devices a bit more, whereas it seems to be mostly stuck with the same specs as previously. Um, it's also got the same size battery, uh, 1230 milliamp hour battery that was in there. Um, of course you do get ice cream sandwich, you can see we've got sort of the multitasking menu here. We can do things like, uh, you know, you can see we've got this um, sort of folder crease on the home screen, you can get one app and drag and drop it onto another app to create a folder as you can see there which is quite neat um, there's also things like um, when you get a new notification you can sort of swipe them away rather than having to actually clear them down individually you can just sort of swipe them off the screen which is nice uh, I think you can do much the same with the uh, open tasks you can just swipe them away like that um, say on the Wildfire S uh, same 5 megapixel camera but you get a um, uh, an LED flash with the Wildfire S, you don't get that on the Desire C, as you can see there's no flash at all, which is a bit of a shame, but we'll just uh, pop into the camera here, and uh, you can see, uh, fairly quick to respond if I just uh, snap a photo, I mean it responds quite quickly, but it doesn't really, it takes a while before it's ready again for the next photo, so don't expect to be taking loads of photos in rapid succession. Um, you do have some filter effects, just up at the top here you can see we've got various different effects grayscale, sepia, negative, solarized, posterized and aqua um, we've also got a video mode uh, so if we just go into here and see what uh, different settings are available in video mode it doesn't look, look like really... Uh, why I started recording video, let's see what settings we have uh, video quality so it seems the highest we can go is 640 by 480 so not even uh, sort of high definition video recording which is a bit of a shame but I suppose that's due to the uh, processor speed um, but generally the camera's alright for what you would expect for a 5 megapixel unit I mean it's not the best um, in low light obviously because uh, it's got no flash um, but you know it's not too bad for a low end device like this okay, so once you've taken your videos and your photos you can go into the gallery to view them uh, you can do that straight from the camera as well. Um, you can see if you just pop up here, it shows them all as different thumbnails, and you can see the videos come up with this sort of little play icon on them. You can open them up in portrait and flip the phone on its side to uh, put them into landscape view and just flick through easy peasy. Uh, and then when you come to a video, so you get the play view, the play uh, icon here, sorry, and you can just hit that to play the video back. So here's one from the other night. See, the quality is not brilliant. Uh, you can see when the ball moves in a minute as well, it doesn't handle motion particularly well. You know, the frame rate is quite low. Um, but it's decent enough for watching back on the screen. You know, it's not, it's certainly not HD, but then the screen on the phone is not HD. And I'm not sure that if you're buying this phone, you necessarily sort of upload the videos to a, you know, a computer or a DVD player to actually play them back on an HD screen anyway. It's probably best for just sort of uh, sharing with friends on Facebook or something like that. So yeah, it's got all the usual bits and pieces on it. Uh, the only thing is I'm just a bit disappointed in the fact they haven't updated the actual hardware very much since the HTC uh, Wildfire S. So as I say, the process is still relatively slow, the screen's quite low resolution. Um, but altogether, it's not such a bad phone. I mean, I really like the uh, finish on this particular one. You can get it in white and black as well. Uh, as you can see, this red one um, is quite nice looking, sort of like a matte finish to it, and it's sort of a soft-touch plastic too. Um, so it's quite a nice finish. Um, not really a bad way to do a phone uh, if you're going to use sort of plastics and that. It does still feel relatively high quality, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, anyway, that was a quick look and review of the uh, HTC Desire C. This is Russ Jeffers from mobileburn.com.